Here we're going to be looking at a lower cost of market for inventory costing and using this rule here. But before we get into that, I want to go and look at a mistake that I made here. So when you get down to this area here where it says uh, uh, the designated market value here is the amount compared to the cost here. I had mistakenly put in here the replacement cost, but this designated market value is, is going to be compared to the cost later on here. So uh, bear with this, go through this video here, and when you see the uh, replacement cost here for this designated market value, replace it here with cost. Okay, so let's continue on. Here we're going to be going through the lower cost of market uh, inventory costing here and we're going to just be going through a general application of this rule here uh, and this is where the lower cost of market that's where inventories are recorded at their cost if the inventory declines in value below its original cost for whatever reason obsolescence price changes or damaged goods you write down the inventory to the market value uh, to report this loss here and we're just going to be going through an example here where we have some items here as inventoried items here and then we're going to have to determine a number of uh, uh, categories here, uh, uh, um, a ceiling value here, a floor value, and we're going to, in this case, we're going to first have to de determine a designated market value here before we can apply this rule here. So let's go through our definitions here. Of course, we've got our items A through uh, D E here, and then the replacement cost, well, that's whatever cost it takes to replace these items here. But then we have to determine the ceiling amount here and this floor amount here. Now, let's just look at that here. Those are the limits here. The ceiling and floor here, those are limits that prevents over or undervaluing our inventory. So the ceiling amount can't go over that floor amount you can't go under that here so first for a net realizable value our ceiling amount here so let's go up and look at that the net realizable value here that's the estimated selling price in a normal course of business unless a reasonably predict less any reasonably predicted cost of completing or disposing of this inventory here and that we would refer to as the net selling price here this NRV ceiling amount net selling price here the next uh, item here is the net realizable value less the profit margin or the floor here, the minimum value here. So let's go and it's best to look at that just through an example here. So uh, you have your inventory, your sales value here of let's say this item here 65,000 then you would subtract out any cost to complete or dispose of this inventory here of 5,000 in this example and then the, on the subtracting it here you come up with your net realizable value here of $60,000. Now you would subtract out any profit margin let's say it's 12 percent of the sales value here yeah, for $8,000 subtract that here from the net realizable value here of 60,000 and you come up with your net realizable value less the normal profit margin margin here of $52,000. So that's how you'd ca calculate this net realizable value here less those profit margin or this floor amount here. And you can see here A was $52,000. So uh, next here we have to determine this designated market value here. So what is that? The designated market value is the amount compared to the replacement cost. And we look at that. It's always the middle value here of these three amounts, the replacement cost, the uh, to the net realizable value or three to net realizable value less the normal profit margin. So this designated market value here, that's always going to be the middle cost. It's always going to be the middle cost between every what the high and the low is uh, for each of these items here. So let's just look at item A here. Uh, in this case, the middle value here is $52,000 here. That's that um, floor amount here because you can see the high amount here is $60,000. Low amount here is $44,000. So the middle between those two amounts here is $52,000. That would be the designated market value here for item A. Now, we go through here for the remaining items here. You can see item B, uh, the middle value here is 45000 between the ceiling amount here of 50000 and the floor amount here of 35000 And then uh, just for C, uh, we'd have uh, 20000 here. That's that 20000 amount here. D, the middle value here would be 24000 you can see that 24,000. That's what we'd have for our designated market value here for item D. And then for E, you can see the middle value here is 46,000. 
there we have our designated market value of 46,000. So this is what we're we're going to be using here in this lower cost of market when we uh, start costing our inventories and applying this rule here. And just uh, one uh, general uh, in general here, the lower cost of market rule LCM it stands for that's the value of inventory or a lower cost of market to the amount that is not more devaluing it adhere to the amount that is not more than a net realizable ceiling or less than a net realizable of all, uh, less any normal profit margin here, the floor amount. So now let's go and let's see how we'd apply this rule using the example that we just went through. Now let's apply this lower cost or market uh, rule here to determine, in this case, our final inventory value, value here. And we're going to be doing it uh, by an item by item basis here to start with. So what do we have to do here? Uh, we have to compare the designated market value that we calculated here to the cost of the, in this case, to each item here to determine the lower cost or market for each of the items here. So we're taking the lower value here would be selected either between the cost of the item here versus its market value here. So going back to our chart here, we have our designated market value. You remember that was the middle amount here between the replacement cost, the ceiling value, and the floor value here. So that was the middle amount here. So we take this designated market value and we compare it with the cost here uh, for each of these items in this case. And what we mean here by the cost here, that is the acquisition cost. That would be our acquisition cost. That's not to be confused here with the replacement cost. This is uh, what it costs to acquire each of those items. So looking at item A here, cost $40,000 and the de market value here was $52,000. So it, we're going to be taking the lower of those two values here. In this case, it would be uh, the cost here of $40,000. So that would, would we'd be assigned to our final inventory value here, $40,000. Now, if we go through our item, other items here, B through E, we're going to find that, that the market value here is, is the lower amount here uh, for each case here. So what we would do is we would just assign that to our final inventory value, the uh, market value here only because it's the lower value here. So what we do is we just sum uh, items A through E here and we would determine our final inventory value here to be $175,000. Now let's go down here and look at the other cases that we could uh, have here for this lower cost or market rule here and we're going to uh, be doing it here by the individual items. Uh, that's one case here that we already looked at here but then we could be looking at major categories and then also the total inventory. So let's look at it here. You may apply this lower cost or market either directly to each item as we did above here or to each category. We'll set up some categories here or to the total inventory value here. Usually the item by item basis is used here. So let's go look at our example here. Of course we have our cost here and then our designated market value here or market value. And what we're going to do is be comparing those two here to find what the lower value is here. And in the case here of our categories, let's just say we have category one here and we uh, include items a, B, and C in category one. And then we have category two of our inventories here, and those would include items D and E here. So let's go and look at our how we determine our lowest value here for each uh, either. And by, for the individual items, we've done that above here. All we did is we've taken uh, lower between the cost here and the designate or the market value for each. The lower value gets assigned here to our inventory value. All right. So what we would do is again we just sum sum all those up and we come with our total cost here on an individual basis here at $175,000 which we've done uh, equals the amount that we've calculated above here. So now let's look at our say the case here where we have major categories here and let's look at how we've done that. So category 1 that include item A, B and C here. So what we would do here is we would sum our total cost here for items A, B and C here and we determine that to be $115,000 then sum our total um, market value here for items A, B and C $117,000. So what we're doing here we're going to take the lower cost between the market and our cost here. So the, in this case the lower the cost here would be our lower value here at $115,000. So for category one we would assign our inventory value here at the lower cost are $115,000. Now looking at category two here, that 
includes D and E. So all we would do here is we'd sum D and E, come up with our total amount here, 92500 for our cost, and then for our market value here, sum D and E comes up with $70,000 for, in this case, the market cost here. So we compare our cost here of 92500 with the market amount here of $70,000, and the lower amount here would be our market. So that is what we assign here to our category amount, the $70,000. So to determine our, by category, our major categories here, category 115000 plus category 2 here of $70,000 gives us a total uh, of inventory value here of $185,000. Now the other item to look at here is our total inventory amount. All we're doing here is we're taking our total costs here and we could do it by category here. It's like $115,000 plus the total for category two here, $92,500, and we come up with $207,500 as our inventory based on the cost here of those items. Now, uh, we compare that to the market amount here. Again, let's just look at categories here. 117000 here for category one um, for the market amount here, plus 70000 here for category two gives us a total amount here of $187,000. So what we're looking at here for the total inventory here, you're just going to take the lower of these two. In this case, the market of value here is the lowest. The $187,000 is less than $207,500. So that's what we'd be assi assigning here based on the total, for our total inventory here, uh, based on the total inventory uh, between a uh, total inventory costs here between the uh, uh, lower of the market versus the cost here. So what we've done here is we've just gone through and looked at it in three different ways here. There's the individual items are made by our major categories and then just to looking at our total inventory costs. So that would be a summary here on how the lower cost or, or market here is used here to determine our ending inventories.